Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. She was caught by me after receiving a text at my daughter's birthday party that said, I love you more. When I asked what that was about, she said it was from a co-worker she'd been helping. Because we had all our family and friends there, I didn't push it. Later, the next day, she came clean and said she had been in a relationship for six months, this was back in October. She refused to tell me who it was with or what they'd done. I was devastated. Absolutely destroyed. Still am. So we spent some time apart, and she continued her relationship with him. I did some digging in the meantime, and looking at the phone records, it turned out to be our son's coach. I called her out on it, and she still continued the relationship. I saw a lawyer, and he told me not to leave the house or the kids, and to either try to work it out or decide when it was time to leave and see a therapist. My therapist says she's a narcissist and that I should protect myself, protect my kids, and run. Come December, she said she had cut it off with him and wanted to try again. I gave her all the effort in the world, but I don't feel like her heart's been in it. She's not overcompensating, nor has she truly apologized for what she's done. I've also gotten access to her photos, I'm the admin on the family Google account, and she doesn't know that I've seen everything. She framed a picture of him and had it, maybe still does, at her desk. I found naked selfies she sent him, which I haven't even received. I also found a picture of his naked backside in our beach condo, which I thought was a neutral space since we weren't sharing it during our time apart. I slept on those same sheets. I know she was at a fancy restaurant with someone else, and she screenshots all these deep love quotes that I know aren't about me. So much of this lies rent-free in my head. She has a white bracelet with one black bead that she now wears every day. I've called her out on it. She lied once and said it was from her mom, and just last week, she said, well, my best friend has a matching one but her affair partner wears an all-black one with one white bead. I know what that represents. Again, she doesn't know I've seen all these things. So now, to the current day, I can't find anything that suggests she's still with him, but I know she uses Snapchat often and is secretive with her phone. Whenever I bring up the affair, there's a blow-up because I said I'd try not to bring it up and get over it, but I simply can't. I'm not rubbing it in, but it does come up when we argue, which is almost every week. We do really well for a bit, including intimacy, but then something happens, and we go back to square one. She cancelled our babysitter for trivia this past Tuesday, and for this Friday, where I got us tickets to see a show. But she doesn't want to go because I can't get over her affair. Her parents, mom and stepfather, both cheated on their spouses for each other and support my wife. They both call and text me, saying it's unfair that I bring up her affair. The pictures of him live rent-free in my head almost constantly. I can't get past what she's done, no matter how hard I try. I don't know what to do, as she's trying to make me the bad guy, and I'm like. I've been here the whole time. I didn't fall in love with someone else. I just don't understand, and I feel like an emotional train wreck. I literally just caught her at the family condo with the affair partner, and I have photos and videos of his truck, his belongings in the home, and her coming out of the master bedroom where he stayed behind a closed door. I also went into our shared car, which she drove, and it was left unlocked in the parking garage with an open high noon, alcoholic beverage in the cup holder and her wallet and belongings still in it. She came home and tried to talk. It was a calm conversation, but she kept saying it was my fault, and if I had communicated with her last night, I grey-rocked her, maybe she wouldn't have been with him. So I communicated that I would be home later this afternoon evening, so she's unexpectedly watching the kids today. I wanted to hang out with them, as she took them away from me yesterday to go do activities. I plan to do separate activities with them today, but I'm not emotionally able to give the kids the best of me right now, and I definitely don't want to be around her. I asked if she could sleep in one of the kids' rooms, and she got upset and stated that our bed is her bed and she'll sleep where she wants. I said, obviously. 
I've already been for a six-mile walk and have been calling and leaving voicemails with all the lawyers around. I know I can't abandon the home, but I can't be around them after what I just saw this morning. Thank all of you who responded earlier this week and suggested Grey Rock and the 180 technique for me. I implemented them, and I guess it drove her to this. But I'm officially divorcing her, and there's no going back. Legal counsel told me to have no contact with her, so that's what I'm doing. She texted me last night, talking about how she hasn't asked for a second chance, even though I've given them. She said she loves me and is now willing to do therapy, share her location, give me access to her phone, and can't imagine rocking on the porch at 80 without me. Yada yada. When I got home last night, she was in the master bedroom, so I slept upstairs. This morning, there was no communication. She wouldn't even look at me. Yesterday, when I caught them on video, I saw his hat and noticed it was from a local landscaping company. So I called to see if he worked there. He does. Okay, thanks. That was it. Then this guy just called me, saying, if you want to talk to me, here's my number. Don't call my boss. I said, I have nothing to say to you. He replied, I have nothing to say to you, and hung up. Also, her mom reached out and said how devastated I must be that she's so sorry, and to call her when I have a chance. I'm going to continue my no-contact policy with everyone and let my lawyer, once I secure one, do all the talking. This is so damn hard. So, she'd love-bombed me, confessed a lot of what she's done, and I fell into it for a few days. The intimacy was great, but then we had a tiff last Friday, and we've basically had no contact since, even though we're living under the same roof. She got into my Google Photos account and deleted a lot of the evidence I'd collected, including videos, but I backed up the important ones. She's literally trying to hide and cover up her affair. I have an appointment with my lawyer this Friday, and we'll go from there. I've been running, house shopping, and trying to stay distracted. It's very hard. I have a lot of emotions and sadness. I lost my best friend and lover to someone else. I know I need to keep telling myself that it's her loss, and it will be, but it still sucks. Especially hearing her tell me all the horrible things she's done. I don't want to get divorced, but it's what has to happen for my own self-respect and happiness. I can never, ever trust her again. First update. Well, first off, I did it. I officially filed for divorce, and she has been served. She has less than two weeks to respond. This was quite literally the hardest decision I've ever had to make. To be 100% honest, I still don't want to, but deep down, I know it's what's best for me in my soul, my anxiety, and my mind. Over the past month, we've had good days and bad days. Tension was always high, and it turns out she was still lying about him. I got hold of her phone again and found out she had been sharing her location with him on Snapchat. This was happening even while we were supposedly trying to make things work, yet she wouldn't share that information with me, her own husband, despite me asking. Oh, and she changed his name in Snapchat so I wouldn't know it was him. Multiple layers of deception. She also changed his name in her contacts to throw me off. Too bad for her, I know tech pretty well and can be a bit smarter and more clever than the average bear. On her birthday, we weren't getting along, so she chose to spend the evening with him while I hung out with our kids. She didn't tell me, I found out by searching her phone for his name. That same day, she had been texting her best friend and literally told her I was being annoying, saying, why don't you just divorce me, about me. In arguments, she'd text me to divorce her because I would express how unhappy I was and how I was struggling to trust her after all the shady things she'd done. Everything from blocking me on Snapchat, her reason was that she didn't want to see my snaps, to using a crazy phone screen cover, to changing the lock code on our car, which has both of our names on it, though she primarily uses it. Just really odd behavior. Then, she would also try to love-bomb me, hoping I would just go along with everything and play the role of a good family man. More recently, on my birthday, I made the poor decision to go out with her. We had a lovely time until something triggered me and her affair came up. 
We started arguing. It escalated to the point where I was recording her on my phone as she went ballistic. She straight up hit me on the side of my head, knocking my phone to the ground. We tussled over my phone, and it was all recorded. She called the police, but no charges were pressed. I was told to sleep upstairs, which I did willingly. The next day, she filed a protective order against me. As a result, I couldn't reach out to or see the kids, or her, which was fine by me, for a week. I couldn't even be in my own home. She did, however, have the kids call me every day, which was very nice. During that week, my lawyers convinced me that the best course of action, especially for custodial reasons, was to file. Filing for divorce would supersede the restraining order, so I went ahead and did it. At the court hearing, she was officially served. She already knew it was coming the night before, thanks to her friend who's an officer, as it became public record. In front of the judge, she admitted that I posed no threat to her or our children and said that I'm a great father. She also stated that I'm allowed to freely come and go at the house and anywhere else I choose since I'm not a danger to anyone. She even expressed that she wants me to be with the kids. This is all on record, so I'll use it in the custody battle if necessary. While we've discussed 50 50 custody, it's good to have this in my favor. The judge basically called the whole thing a waste of time, stating that since the restraining order has to remain until we finalize the divorce, it's now moot, except for the fact that I'm not allowed to threaten her, which, of course, I've never done nor would ever do. I've since moved to a family home that has space for both me and the kids. They each have their own rooms, beds, toys, books, everything they need. We've been splitting time with them. She initially expected me to make a 40-minute commute in the mornings to be with the kids by 7.30 so she could get to work, but I made it clear that if we have them overnight, we each handle the mornings ourselves, regardless of where the kids are. She fought this for a bit, but after I showed her that I had a pendente light order ready, which would give me 50% of the main house and potentially displace her, she backed down. So, that's about it for now. She's still trying to win me back, but I've caught her going back to him for separate times. I can't give her another chance. I want to, but I know deep down I just can't. I can't trust her. This is the hardest thing I've ever gone through. I break down randomly, and I'm terrified about what the future holds and how everything will work out. It hurts so much that she chose him over me. And now she has the nerve to try to win me back, telling me how much all of this is hurting her. It's like, well, maybe you shouldn't have had a ye long affair. An affair that I first found out about through an I love you more text. Maybe you shouldn't have given my engagement and wedding ring back to me twice. You chose him. If it had been a one-time thing, maybe I could have recovered and forgiven her. But to go back to him time after time, hiding everything, deceiving me in so many ways, it's too much. I'm the one choosing to break up our beautiful little family, and it kills me. But I have to stand up for myself. I know I can never trust her again. She keeps asking for time to heal, yet she keeps going back to him and then gets mad at me for bringing up her affair whenever we argue. I can't help it. That guy lives rent-free in my head, and almost everything reminds me of her infidelity. She chose him over me, and now she has to face the consequences. The sad part is, I'm suffering just as much, if not more. Don't get married, folks. I'm sure more will come to me, but I just needed to get this out of my head and onto paper. Thanks for reading through my wall of text, and I truly appreciate all the support over the past few months. Second update. All right, I guess it's time for another update. Be warned, there's some pretty questionable decision-making here. So, over the past month, I extended the divorce response deadline to the 9th, which would line up with the end of the protective order. I know it was a risky move, but she had been literally begging me, pleading for another chance. And with tears streaming down her face, saying everything I wanted to hear. I just couldn't say no. She's a phenomenal actress. For the past month, we've actually been cohabitating pretty peacefully. No big arguments, no yelling, nothing that would jeopardize the protective order. We dated again, went to concerts, 
got intimate multiple times, and even joked around. On the surface, things seemed to be going well. But something about it all still felt hollow to me. There was this nagging feeling that the relationship lacked depth, and I couldn't shake the worries about who she might be texting or snapping. She deleted Snapchat before, but without telling me, she reinstalled it. She insists the affair partner is blocked, yet she won't remove her dark screen protector or let me look through her phone. Every time I've asked, she has an excuse. We went to a couple's therapy session, but it was a disaster. We rehashed all the painful details, and the aftermath was incredibly awkward. The whole next day felt strained and uncomfortable. Meanwhile, I've been to two individual therapy sessions, but she hasn't even tried to find one for herself. In the middle of this, she booked a family trip for the four of us to take the kids to a big city, hoping for a fun getaway. We also had a holiday weekend vacation planned, but given recent events, I've decided not to join them. I'm pretty torn up about it, honestly. And let's not forget, the protective order has remained in place this whole time. This past weekend, we took the kids to a local celebration, and we actually had a decent time. She was affectionate in front of her friends, and we enjoyed the afternoon. We had a few beers, which can sometimes lead to rocky situations, but it was all good. Afterward, we headed to dinner. As we were walking in, she took our son and rushed ahead. I called out, asking her to wait since I was with our daughter. She kept going, about 10 to 15 feet ahead of us, leaving me to follow along with our younger one. As we were walking to the restaurant, I stopped and called out, Hey, can we walk together? She slowed down, but we still weren't walking together. A bit louder, I asked again, I want to go in as a family, can we walk in together? Finally, she replied, Oh, I thought we were, and we walked in holding hands with the kids. We found a table outside, but by then, I felt disconnected. These were her friends, and they knew about her affair. This was our first time out with them since then, and it mattered to me that we appeared as a family, not as two separate pairs. I tried to explain this to her when we sat down, but she dismissed it, saying, you're making it a bigger deal than it needs to be. You're ruining our evening. When I calmly replied that I was just expressing my feelings, she doubled down, accusing me of picking a fight. Feeling frustrated, I excused myself to cool down. When I returned, one of her friends had joined us. Trying to keep the peace, I stayed silent. But then she asked me directly what was bothering me. I answered that I didn't want to discuss it with her friend there. That set her off, she raised her voice, cursed at me, and even flipped me off. It shocked me, especially with the kids sitting right there. Her friend quickly excused herself, and as I tried to keep my calm, I decided to step out for a walk around the building. When I came back, she was furiously texting. I asked who she was texting, and she claimed it was her best friend about a game. I asked to see the texts. She handed me her phone, and sure enough, she'd been messaging the friend who'd just left, complaining that I was pissed because I wasn't getting enough attention. When I called her out for lying, she snatched her phone back. I didn't resist, I'm done with those games. We agreed to leave once the kids were done eating. On the ride home, she tried to record our conversation again, so I calmly explained why her lying at dinner bothered me. I told her it hurt that she'd talk negatively about me to her friends, and that I felt I couldn't trust her honesty. She remained silent, so I explained I'd give her space once we got home. I planned to go downtown for the evening and told her to call if she wanted to talk. When we got home, I stepped inside briefly, and when I came back out, she was speeding away in the car, with our kids in the garage. Considering how much she'd had to drink, it was concerning, to say the least. Final update I asked our son if mommy said where she was going. He said the beach house, that's where she escapes to and has had her affair partner there a few times, so my mind immediately jumped to bad conclusions, and apparently I'm wrong for that. I said, get in the car. They popped in, and I called her. Surprisingly, she picked up. I said, you better turn around right now. She said no. I said, look behind you, 
and there I was. I warned her that if she didn't turn around, I would call the police for intoxicated driving and that she'd get her third DUI. She hung up and turned around. We were maybe two blocks from the house. She parked and ran inside. The kids and I got out and played for a bit. They then wanted some TV time, so they crawled into the bedroom where she was. I said, okay, cool, I'm going out for some space. I went out, ate dinner, and when I came home, they were all passed out in bed. I decided to go out again and ran 3.43 miles. After that, I came home, went upstairs, showered in the guest bathroom, and fell asleep in our daughter's bed. The next morning, I woke up hearing the TV downstairs and hung out with the kiddos, got them dressed, and made breakfast while she slept. She got up, got dressed, and started to run out the door. I followed her into the garage and asked, Where are you going? She said, Walmart. I replied, You just get to dictate when you leave without telling anyone. She said, Yep, and left. She came back very quickly, came in, and asked the kids if they wanted to go with her. They did, so they all left. While out, she texted me that I was being aggressive and that she was trying to get some space. I replied that if she used those words, I could be around. She again called me aggressive. So, I got in my car and went out for the day, refusing to be aggressive, as I legally couldn't towards her. In the afternoon, I came home, gathered some belongings, and left for the other house I stay in when we're separated. Lots of texts were exchanged, and she concluded that I wouldn't be able to get over her deeds and her absolute refusal to pay attention to my needs. She popped in some texts saying she should have tried harder and that I couldn't always bring up the past, I'm thinking, two months ago isn't the past. I really felt like she was shifting the blame onto me for being upset about her actions. It's always that way. I get upset about something she did or communicate my feelings, and she doesn't think they're valid. I just need to put it in the past. Heck, she told me I was giving up on the relationship and didn't try to make it work, saying we would have if I had simply talked to her on Sunday. So, I told my lawyer to move forward again and stayed away. On Monday, our lawyers talked, and long story short, she's offering to lift the protective order as long as I give up my rights to the house for separation. She refuses to split time here, the kids stay 100% and she and I split time while staying at other homes when one of us is here with the kids. So, I'm being forced out of my home unless I want to test if the judge will extend the order for her. Again, we've been cohabitating well, we just celebrated our nine-year anniversary, and now she's flipping the script and using the system to her advantage. I'm typing this while in the family home, my family is off on vacation since I shouldn't be around her when she can simply say that I've been any sort of way and get me arrested. I hate that after all this, I'm being displaced, and she gets to use our home in whatever way she wants. Heck, she already has. She's showing her true colours, and it's so deeply disappointing. I'm getting hurt all over again and feel like everything is being stripped from me, even though I was the faithful one. I feel like that was our last hurrah, as she's finally taken off her spare wedding band, that she's worn while with him, and she hates when I bring that up, and has straight up told me she will use the system to get what she wants. It's all so disappointing and such a deeply painful process, and I feel like I'm the bad guy. If you've gotten this far, thanks for reading. Sorry for the rant. I'm going to try to enjoy my alone time and vacation because the next few months are going to be hell. Well, Folks, that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.